How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now after the recent launch of the new 2000 series Ryzen CPUs, we also got the new range of X470 motherboards to accompany the newer high-end CPUs like the 2700X. Even though you could still use the previous X370 board, you would be losing out on some very nice new features that the X470 boards has, like XFR 2.0 and then also Precision Boost 2. So even though the previous range might be cheaper nowadays, you would be losing out on those nice features that will get some more performance out for what you actually buy. But luckily MSI brought out their new X470 Gaming Plus a board that is affordable but still delivers all of the needed features for your new high-end Ryzen CPU. So in this video, we are going to take a look at uh, the X470 Gaming Plus motherboard from MSI, so check out all of the features it has, and then also how it performs. But with all of that being said, let's jump into the review right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get the best deals on all the latest gaming products? Well, Rebeltech is the best place to check out. They have a huge variety of peripherals, PC components, laptops and just everything else you would need. So go check out rebeltech.crza to get the products you are looking for at a low price. So starting off with what you get inside the box along with the X470 Gaming Plus board, you get the manual, the driver DVD and all of the, the paperwork, you get two black SATA cables, an IO shield, an MSI badge and then also a set of M.2 screws. Now as for the design of the board, you get a black PCB with a red line accents that continues over the memory DIMMs, the PCI Express slots and then also the VRM heat spreaders. As for the VRM heat spreaders, it isn't overly large, so I'm not exactly too sure how the VRM attempts will be, but Ryzen doesn't overclock that much, so the attempt should be relatively okay. Unfortunately, the Gaming Plus does not come with an I.O. cover like some of the other X470 boards, which is a bummer, but it wouldn't really impact the performance or anything like that, so it should be fine there. At the back of the board, you don't really get anything else, it's just the same a black PCB. Now, as for RGB, you don't get anything too crazy, but you do get an RGB strip here on the side of the board uh, that is able to light up, along with two 12 volt RGB headers, one for the CPU and then also one at the bottom of the board. And all of this can be set up by MSI's misting lighting software uh, that you are able to link all of your RGB components together, like your memory, your fans, and all of that if it is supporting MSI's misting stick lighting software. Now then as for the CPU, you still get the AM4 socket that supports the first generation and a second generation of Ryzen CPUs and will also be supported up till 2020. So any other CPUs you might get along the way, the board will still support them. Now the board does also support both the desktop Ryzen CPUs and then also the Ryzen APUs if you want to go for something like the 2400G. For the mounting bracket, you get the standard AM4 mounting bracket that you can connect your, your air coolers and so on, or you can remove it to add uh, some uh, custom water cooling uh, or IOs. As for your VR aims, you get your MOSFETs, you get 8 plus 2 chokes, 10 capacitors, and you also get an 8 plus 4 pin uh, CPU power for some higher overclocking, and then of course just your standard 24 pin uh, for your motherboard. Now as for memory, the Gaming Plus supports a dual channel memory with its four DIMMs and has a max of 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory that can go up to 3466 megahertz with an XMP profile overclock. The X470 Gaming Plus board does also support a three-way crossfire with its two PCI Express 3.0 16x slots with a top one running at a max of 16x speed and the second one running at a max of 8x speed. You do also get the bottom PCI Express 2.0 16x slot that runs at 4x speed. Along with that, you do also get a three PCI Express 3.0 1 x slot that is also running at 1x speed. The top PCI Express board also features MSI steel armor which adds additional durability to the slot for heavier cars and prevents the board from bending. 
The Gaming Plus board does also feature two M.2 slots for your M.2 SSDs, with the top one being a Gen 3 and the bottom one a Gen 2. Now, unfortunately, you don't get any M.2 heat spreaders to reduce thermals, uh, but it's perfectly fine for the price range of this board. The Gaming Plus's M.2s does also support all of the M.2 types, with the top one also supporting the extremely long 22110 type M.2 SSDs. Now as for SATA ports, you get 6 SATA 3 ports on the side of the board, uh, but something to keep in mind is that the SATA 1, the second M.2 and then also the last PCI Express 6 time slot does share a PCI Express lanes, uh, so you can only use one of them at a time. Uh, if you use your SATA port, it's going to disable the rest. If you use your PCI Express 16 time slot, it's going to disable the SATA slot and then also the M.2 port. So just keep that in mind. Now, when you use a Ryzen APU like the 2400G, uh, the top PCI Express slot is going to downscale to 8x speed instead of 16x speed. And then also the second PCI Express slot is going to be turned off. Uh, so if you want to use a Ryzen APU, just keep that in mind. Now then as for I.O. you get two USB 2.0 type A ports. Next to that you get still a PS2 connection for some reason. For the display ports you get a DVI-D and then also an HDMI port if you want to use a Ryzen APU. You also get four USB 3.01 Gen 1 type A ports, a Gigabit Ethernet port, two USB 3.1 Gen 2 type A ports, and then also all of your audio connections. Now you will notice that there is a lack of USB type C, which is unfortunate fortunate especially with more and more devices using type c uh, so that is something that i would have liked if msi could have added that but like you still get that usb 3.1 gen 2 type a port so you do get uh, the 10 gigabits a second bandwidth now then for some additional connections you get on the board you get your usb 3.1 gen 1 header for your front io you get an easy debugging leds that let you know which of those components is giving you problems and preventing post you also get six DC or PWM fan headers with one doubling as a pump header as well. And then also a very handy clear CMOS button, which is always a nice addition. Now taking a look at the BIOS, the X470 Gaming Plus supports MSI's Click BIOS 5, where you get your easy mode and your advanced mode. With the easy mode, you get all of your additional checks like your system information, your CPU clock speeds, your memory speeds, your voltages, and your boot priority, and so on. With the advanced mode, you get a lot more that you can go into. You can overclock your CPU, you can overclock your memory, you can check all of your specs there. You can still change your voltages, your boot priorities, and so on. You do also have the option of checking your fan speed where you can calibrate that to whatever you would want uh, just to keep your CPU all and all of your temperatures in a check. Now then some additional software that you can go download from MSI's website is the command center which shows you your system information like temps, voltages, hardware and more. You're also able to overclock your CPU and then you can also control your fans through the command center. You do also get your gaming app which has some pre-programmed modes. You get a gaming mode, your silent mode and then OC mode. And then you also get your X boost which is just a simple way of prioritizing your system usage to specific areas. And then also just some other software that you can go download if you wanted to. Now as for benchmarks and performance, alongside the X470 Gaming Plus board, I used a 2700X, a GTX 1080 Ti, and a 16 gigs of memory. I was able to overclock the 2700X to 4.2 gigahertz at 1.4 volts, and overclock the memory to 3200 megahertz. So with this overclock, I was able to get some really nice uh, benchmarks out of the 2700X at uh, that uh, 2.4 gigahertz on Firestrike, Firestrike Extreme, uh, Unigen Superposition, and then also, of course, a Cinebench, uh, where it did score a really nice uh, score there. So these benchmarks just shows me that even though the X470 Gaming Plus board is more on the affordable side, you still get all of the needed performance out of it. You still get a ton of features uh, that you would want. Uh, again, I was able to overclock the 2700X to that 4.2 gigahertz, uh, which you really want for your 2700X. 
so you get all of the new performance and at a much lower cost than some of the other boards where they can go up quite a bit. So if you guys wanted to check out the X470 Gaming Plus board from MSI, I will leave links in the video description where you can get it on Rebeltech if you live in South Africa or on Amazon if you live somewhere else. Also a big thanks to MSI for sending over the X470 Gaming Plus board for this review. And if you guys like this video, please like, share, subscribe and comment like always. And then also if you guys want me to review any other hardware, let me know down in the comments below. But with all of that being said, thanks for watching guys and we'll check all of you guys next time. Cheers guys.